do you have a favorite suspension platform to work with? You know, like FSR, VPP, high pivot, some combo, like, is there one that you like most? Um, no, I think you can build a good bike with lots of different suspension platforms. I, I recently posted a picture with uh, Forbidden that I just built yeah. up and everybody's like, oh, is this the future? Is this the only way? Is this this? It's like, no, it's just one way of doing things. Because of the high pivot? Like that's what they're thinking? Yeah, yeah. And it high pivots are all the rage right now. Mm-hmm. Similar to, I mean, I guess comments all did start the whole high pivot thing, really. I mean, for the masses, like, Sure. When when Amory was winning everything, and all of a sudden everybody's building a high pivot bike, and I'm I'm not saying that they're the only ones, and that other people haven't been on it for a long time, mm-hmm. but they were the ones to tip the trend, I think. Um, but it's not the only answer, and you can do an awful lot with a basic four bar bike. I think very few people tick all the boxes before they go checking a different design. Hmm. Uh, like some of the new six bar stuff is really cool and it presents some really interesting uh, possibilities for fine tuning things like anti squat and anti rise. But you can also get really close to it with other designs that are far simpler. And most people wouldn't be able to tell. Hmm. I think the unfortunate thing with the bike world is that there's so many um, there's so many what am I looking for? I'm blanking. <laughs> there's just there's so many ideas, yeah, unproven, and it's just this is the way you do it. It's like, well. Are you sure? (laughs) Hmm. Because there's a lot of bikes that work really well that are done this way or done this way or done this way. Yeah. And it seems like there's that restlessness of like, that looks like it did last year. Like it can't be any better. And I hate that fallacy. I understand why, you know, people want something new, but it's like, it seems like we're at a point where stuff's just getting so refined that it doesn't need to look different, does it? I don't think so. I think people are grasping at straws for difference. Um, and we've always been that that business of everything has to look totally different each time it's launched. And I I just don't think it's necessary. Like a lot of these bikes with a one or two millimeter change, you could completely change the way that bike rides, or a slightly different construction in the in the carbon or aluminum or whatever you're building it out of. And you'd have a completely different bike, but it would look exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. And that's up to all of us to kind of change that, that process. Uh, it's up to manufacturers. It's up to, it's up to journalists and editorials and it's up to riders to inform themselves and make choices based on what works. Yeah. It, yeah, like it's, it's even tough. in the comments, you see all kinds of stuff. Like some somebody will post a picture of a rock shop, right? And then the next comment is like Fox forever or DVO is the only one. It's like, well, why? Yeah. Do it's, what works and and pick which one's best for you. It's like none of us really think that somebody else is doing anything so spectacularly different we're all basically building the same thing. Hmm. So everybody's just kind of looking at some way to make it stand out. Yeah. And it would be cool if that way to make it stand out was performance rather than visual. Yeah. See, that's some, that freshness and transparency that, I don't know, I think it's cool you'd say that. <laughs> it, I mean, yeah, I guess <laughs> it has to happen. I'm a big fan of consistency. Okay. I mean, look at Jordan and Matt Walker on that Saracen. Yeah. Like that's a single pivot linkage driven bike. It's about as simple as you can get. Mm -hmm. 
and it's winning races. I'm not saying that everybody should just ride the same thing all the time, but there is something to be said for predictability and consistency. Okay. 